The Honourable David Parker. It wasn't a great speech by uh, Mr Brownlee, the Leader of the House, but at least it was better than John Key's, because John Key's speech had very, very little substance on the economic plan for this country, because the reality is that John Key's government doesn't have an economic plan for this country. They've only got one policy, and it's tax cuts, tax cuts weighted to the rich. Mr Speaker, we heard, did hear today, though, how the battle look lines are going to be drawn for this election. The, the theme that we've heard from uh, Mr Key, repeated, no doubt, by arrangement by the Act contribution from Rodney Hyde, from Peter Dunn's contribution from United Future, and again by Jerry Brownlee, was the accusation that if you get a Labour-led government, we will be fiscally irresponsible, that Phil Goff will be... Will be uh, borrow and spend, I think, is the rhetoric they're using. Well, that, it, you know, New Zealanders will not be fooled by that rhetoric. They know that in Phil Goff they've got a man who has been in 15 budgets as a minister of Labour-led governments, and he, of all people, cannot be accused of being fiscally irresponsible. Mr Goff is not a spendthrift in either his public life as a 15-year cabinet minister or in his private life. It will not run. Phil Goff count is... Phil, that's right, some people might say the opposite. He is not a spendthrift. He will never put this country's finances at risk. Neither is Labour. Neither is Labour. Let no one be fooled by the rhetoric of national to the contrary. It's because of the prudence of the last Labour government that New Zealand's government debt reduced between 2000 and 2008, or else we would be in the position of Greece, we would be in the position of Portugal, we would be in the position of Great Britain and of Italy where we had high government debt. But New Zealand doesn't have high government debt because the last Labour government reduced government debt. And who opposed those budgets? Who opposed those budgets? National. Every one of those budgets where we ran budget surpluses was criticised by the national government, was criticised by Bill English, who said, Labour, you're being greedy, don't run budget surpluses, give more tax cuts. And if we had done that, we would have further fuelled inflation, we would have further fuelled the debt and asset bubbles that New Zealand and the rest of the Western world was experiencing at the time. It was National who called for irresponsible budget cuts, uh, budget tax cuts that would have reduced those surpluses, and it was national when they were last in power under Muldoon, or time before last, that left New Zealand with staggering levels of government debt, and it's national who this time has put through unaffordable tax cuts weighted to the top 10 per cent, which means that they are borrowing billions of dollars every year, and as a consequence, government debt is rising under national. Now, you don't just have to believe me on that, because I've got here an article in the New Zealand Herald from the December the 18th, 2008. That's about a month after the 2008 election. And we had Bill English, and he's quoted here in an article from the Herald by Audrey Young, and it says, Bill English had to swallow the proverbial dead rat this morning and effectively acknowledge that Michael Cullen had done something right in his stewardship of the government's finances in the past nine years. And this is Bill English having condemned his predecessor for many years for paying off debt too quickly. English said, and this is the quote, I want to stress that New Zealand starts from a reasonable position in dealing with the uncertainty of our economic outlook. In New Zealand, we have to room to respond. This is the rainy day that government has been saving up for. Not his government. The prior Labour government. We were the one that ran surpluses and reduced debts. He told that to reporters, and it was reported in the Herald on the 18th of December. He could have also said that his incoming government inherited either the lowest or the second lowest rate of unemployment in the world. Mr Speaker, it is once again national whose poor economic performance and income tax, 42% of which are going to the top 10%, have contributed to a large deficit in a stagnating economy. As I've said previously, the current government's only got one major plank to its policy, tax cuts for those who already earn the most. That's what they believe in, and plainly their fail plans failed, the economy's stalled, the deficit's grown, there's little good news in terms of exports, the current account deficits projected to, by Treasury to widen to over 6% of GDP again, having undermined the company's 
finances. The, the Nationals now trying to convince them that the last card in their hand that they want to play is right. And that's the one that Jerry Brownlee spent some time on. He said that New Zealand should now sell the family silver or borrow against it. And they're now proposing that we flog off schools into public-private partnerships. Schools have always been run on the government balance sheet because governments do it cheaper than if you lease them from the private sector. And now they're coming out and they're saying we should flog off half of the SOEs, the electricity SOEs, and we had the audacity of Jerry Brownlee to pretend that that wouldn't result in an increase in electricity prices. Who believes that? The profit motivation to maximise price will overcome. We know that those markets are not properly competitive. We've had reports from the Commerce Commission to that very effect just within the last couple of years. Make no mistake, Labor will be highlighting that if National get their way, return to the Treasury benches, flog off those SOEs, electricity prices will go up. We're two and a half years into this government, two and a half years, the economy's stagnating and it's time to say, are they performing? How should we judge that? Well, we should judge that upon the promises that they made when they were elected. First off, narrow the wage gap with Australia. Are they? Of course they're not. They're exposed on that. It's become a meaningless promise that they say that they're not even going to be held to account for for any milestone by which they can be judged. Next, they promised an aggressive recovery from recession. Are they getting that? No. Then they said we're going to have, we're going to have a step change in the New Zealand economy. That, that phrase has disappeared from their lexicon. They don't even talk about that now. They've even taken it off their publications. You look back a few months and they had... The economy, National seeks a step change. You look at their current plans, it's nowhere to be seen. They've given up on their rhetoric about a step change. Mr Speaker, last year some of the commentators at the Labour Party conference said they thought the next election might be about economic policy. They're absolutely right. And they will see a difference between National and Labour because Labour believes in truly resetting the economy on an export focus. You know, we, we had the National Party have a Turks, tax working group. They actually got close to ring-fencing losses. Those papers are pretty evident that there were actually some people in National thought it was necessary because we overinvest in the speculative economy, but then they couldn't do it. They couldn't bring themselves to ring-fence losses. They left the tax preference in favour of that $200 billion of private uh, rental residential investment, which returns nothing to the taxpayer, those people offset their losses against other losses. And even worse than that, they misdirect precious investment into residential property, which should be going into the export economy. Already this year, Labor has announced more economic policy than National has. Last year, we announced changes to monetary policy to help things for exporters. And we'll see through with that if we get elected. This year, we've already had two major announcements. The first was in respect of ring fencing of losses. Now, there has been a lot of emphasis on how that will pay for a tax-free zone for every New Zealander, and that's good. But for me, the second most important part of that is it resets the investment signal in New Zealand so that some of that $200 billion, which is presently in residential rental investment, will be redirected to the investment in the export economy. That's how you make a difference to grow this economy. It's by growing exports, by giving the right signals through the tax system, not by continuing to prefer the interest of a small financial elite who own more than their share of property and take advantage of that tax advantage to offset against their other income, but most importantly, by dragging money away from the export sector where it is best invested for new jobs and higher incomes. The other announcement that Phil Goff says is we need an R&D tax credit. Well, we all know that. Everyone else in the OECD has one except for, except for New Zealand. We even had one for New Zealand for a brief time under the last Labour government, but then National axed that. Now, of course, R&D investment increasingly happens in Australia. They've got deeper capital markets. They've got R&D tax credits. And so, belatedly, what's the government's response? Another committee. Another committee on savings. Two and a half years. We need a proactive government. We need a government that's going to help New Zealanders save more, help New Zealanders invest in the export sector, help export more and help New Zealanders become wealthier. Mr Speaker, there is no doubt that there is very little substance in the, Labor, in the National Party economic philosophy. It is 
tax cuts, tax cuts and tax cuts. That's all they've got. They've got nothing to grow the economy. The cupboard is now so bare they're going to flog off the SOEs and increase electricity prices. The Honourable Chris Finlayson.